My wife, 27 years old, called and asked for a divorce a few days ago. I, 33 years old, am usually pretty good at maintaining objectivity, but I feel I may need help pulling myself back into that. I am too invested in the relationship. Quick background, we have been together for nine years, married for four, and have two children. I am a service member, and she recently said she couldn't handle being away from friends and family anymore and moved back to that area. We had planned for me to finish up my contract, get out, and with the schooling the military gave me, start a career. We had the divorce discussion previously, and in my mind, it is mostly due to a condition she has. Around her cycle, she completely dissociates from me, and I lose my wife for that time. When it clears up, she is very apologetic and has agreed that previous divorce discussions were spurred by a desire to put a stop to the pain she causes me when she is fighting this condition. We did marriage counseling, and it worked with great effect from my point of view. When the need to go back home came up, it wasn't something I could talk her out of. She had made up her mind. I said, okay, so how do we ensure the relationship then? She had ideas, wanted to make a schedule to talk daily at specific times, planned trips and reassured me over and over that she wanted things to work out. She was sure this short separation would be beneficial to the relationship. When I told her this felt like a trial run divorce, she asked me to trust her and I did. Almost three months in, she calls and says she has the divorce papers drafted. She is fighting her condition right now and she is aware of it. She says this decision is not based on that but based on a lack of happiness and that she feels she has been suppressing her emotions for years. I personally disagree with this. While I do know the week she is struggling is intense, my wife always comes back to me. She has self-image issues as well as struggles with depression, very social and can make friends wherever she goes. The life, as far as I knew, that we were working towards is five years away. It is so close and that is the long estimate. I don't know what is going on, I just know I feel lied to and abandoned. So many people have told me to just let it happen, move on, and learn to be okay with it. This family was what I wanted in life, and I am losing it. I need some advice. As for the condition, it is premenstrual dysphoric disorder, currently untreated. Is it possible to save my family? I know I can't do it alone, but I must be able to do something, right? I know a lot of people's first response will be to leave and be rid of it, but I ask you to be respectful of her. She is still my wife, the mother of my children, and my best friend. Maybe I'm an idiot, given the current situation, but that doesn't change anything for me. I still love this woman very much, and I know that's why it is so painful. What can I do? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. I can agree with the depression part. I know premenstrual dysphoric disorder is a monster to deal with, and I really try to be as supportive as I can during these episodes. I also don't know if I am focusing on that too much. I do know that she has brought a few other issues to me, and admittedly, I was kind of ignorant of the importance of these. I have been researching healthy relationship advice and similar topics for the last few days solidly. I know I have failed her by not being the safe space she needed and by slowly eroding the trust she had with me. I understand this, and I know it will take real change to mend the things I have done wrong, and I am extremely committed to this. Right now, she is with some friends that we have known for a few years. I trust them to watch over her as I cannot currently, but I also know that she's being very, very resistant to me, which makes becoming that safe place for her again difficult. I know this will not happen overnight. Again, I am committed to doing my part. Comment two. I cannot post this in response to someone for some reason. I would like to post it as a standalone comment to hopefully further clarify anything I may have confused. I reread the comment. In another conversation on this post, I talked about how I have done small things to erode the trust and safety. These are new ideas I'm learning about in a different way. Again, I have been researching and trying to learn more. It is unfortunate that it took a kick in the rear to get me to this point, but I am trying to make the best of what I have in this situation. There was no fight or infidelity or anything like that, just miscommunication that went unresolved for far too long. Now, for the update. A few weeks after the initial post, 
I got an invite to a family barbecue at my parents' house. The barbecue was set for the 4th of July, which was usually a holiday that brought the family together. I debated whether to go or not. I mean, I didn't know if I wanted to see my wife or deal with all the family stuff. After thinking about it, I decided to go, hoping to keep things civil for the kids. After all, they deserved to have their parents around for the holidays, right? So, the day of the barbecue comes, and I get there early to help my parents set things up. The atmosphere was definitely tense, but everyone was trying to act normal. My dad cracked some jokes, but honestly, they sort of fell flat. I could feel the awkwardness. My wife arrived separately and seemed pretty distant. She did interact with the kids, which was nice. They were super excited to see her and came running up to her, clinging to her legs and calling her name. It was honestly heartwarming to see them so happy. Then, my younger sister, Kate, thought it would be a great idea to ask about the divorce thinking it was a topic we could discuss openly in front of the family. I was uncomfortable, but I didn't want to create a scene, so I brushed it off and told her we could talk about it later. Everyone else was quiet, thankfully. Later in the afternoon, my wife and I ended up alone by the grill while flipping burgers. We had a lot to talk about, but we barely got a chance to say anything because the kids came running over, needing help with their sparklers. It cut our conversation short, and I was left feeling frustrated. A few days later, I got a text from my wife asking to meet up to discuss the kids. We agreed to meet at a coffee shop, a place we used to go to before the separation. It felt weird being there without the kids, but we needed to talk. During the meeting, she mentioned the idea of sharing custody and how it could work for both of us. It was a tough conversation, but we both knew it was necessary. Then, Things changed when the conversation drifted toward our past. I started reminding her of the good memories we had, hoping it would spark something between us. It was a long shot, but I had to try. A week later, I learned from my mom that my wife had been spending time with an old college friend. I decided to casually ask her about it during our next conversation. When I did, she admitted they had reconnected, but insisted it was just friendship. She claimed she needed support, which stung a little. The kids were talking about the new friend one day, and I overheard them saying he was funny and nice. I couldn't help but feel a little jealous. At a family dinner at my parents' house, the topic of summer plans came up. I suggested a family trip, and my wife seemed hesitant. She said she might have other plans, but the kids were pleading for the trip. She reluctantly agreed, saying it would be good for them. As we prepared for the trip, I noticed more text messages from the old friend on her phone. I tried not to think too much about it, but it was hard to ignore. The family trip went surprisingly well. The kids enjoyed the time with both parents together. It was a reminder of what we used to have, and I couldn't help but feel a little nostalgic. During a quiet moment at the beach, I shared some memories with my wife about past vacations. We laughed and reminisced, and for a brief moment, it felt like old times. After getting home, I found a letter in the mail about the divorce proceedings. It detailed a court date for custody discussions, which made my stomach drop. The day of the hearing arrived. I prepared myself, knowing I needed to advocate for the kids. I didn't want them caught in the middle of all this mess. The atmosphere in the courtroom was tense, but I focused on what I needed to say. The judge suggested mediation to settle the custody arrangement amicably. My wife and I agreed, feeling a slight shift toward cooperation. It was a small step, but I hoped it was a step in the right direction. Edit. I posted again recently about my wife and divorce. Many asked about the college friend. He was just that, a friend. My wife and I are now working on our divorce amicably, focusing on the kids. Am I the idiot? for taking a break from my boyfriend after supporting him financially for over a year and realizing he's not growing. My lovely boyfriend, 26-year-old and I, 27-year-old, have been going through some substantial changes. We've been together four years. Mainly, I've grown as a person, and he hasn't. We met just after university, and his relaxed approach to life was just what I needed. He made me really laugh and feel confident with who I am. He's incredibly tender and genuine. He really wanted to work in the same industry as me, so he got a degree, and I did everything in my power to get him a job. 
it's a notoriously difficult industry to get into. He completed one full contract and has been waiting for another full contract ever since. He fills in for other people occasionally, but not enough to earn a living from. So I've been supporting him for far too long, like since March 2022. I should mention, if there was another full-time contract for him, he'd take it in a heartbeat, but it's just not available right now. I know I'm an enabler, and that sucks. I just wanted to see him succeed, but I know now I have to let people fail so that they learn for themselves. We have fought over him getting another job since I started supporting him. Not only do I pay his bills, but I've given him extra money. I've given him around thirty to $40,000. I know it sounds ridiculous when I type it out now. I genuinely thought, like we talked about, that we'd be equals because he'd do the same for me when my work runs out and he'd give me the money in return when he works. But I just don't see that happening now. He's only just gotten around to the idea that he needs to find a side hustle or another job, and it's taken months of difficult talks, mainly because he didn't want to do something he didn't enjoy. I've cut him off from my support, and he told me that he's going to take a minimum wage job moving chairs. He's never even tried a job that would pay better. He could totally apply for better jobs. I also know that if any job was going to make him miserable, it would be this kind of job. He also needs so much encouragement and support in looking for a job. He doesn't want to admit, even to himself, that he's lost confidence. Even simple things, like fixing little bits and pieces around the house, he needs me to prompt him, even though I work and he doesn't often. His friends are also not helpful. They are not emotionally available, relatively sheltered, and don't understand the complexity of the world. They make him laugh, but don't help him grow. Plus, there are literally six of them. That's it. I'm devastated because I genuinely love him. And that was really hard for me to get there because I've been so badly heartbroken. But I see myself as incredibly lucky and successful. I travel often for work. I'm headhunted to work for different businesses around the country. When I can't get work in my standard field, I jump into corporate as I'm trying to have a dual career. I want to move countries and experience the world. He still makes me laugh and he's my comfort. He's not being malicious. He genuinely cares about me. He wants to make me happy and I don't want to leave, but I know I deserve someone on my level. I don't want to be a mother to him. I don't want to drag him through life. I want someone who can help me as much as I help them. I really need advice on how to leave him and feel okay with it. Last time I left my long-term boyfriend, it took over a year for me to feel myself again, and it was horrible. I don't want to regret my decision. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. But think now, even if you find someone on your level or above, will he genuinely care about you? Will he love you no matter what? If I were making good money and my girlfriend was acting the same as him, working on and off, being insecure or whatever, but being lovely and genuine, I wouldn't try to replace her because the world is full of successful women, but the world lacks good-hearted women. But definitely, he needs to find a job for his mental health. I don't know if you would be able to push him to do so, even if you tried many times. Think about it. The grass is not always greener on the other side. Comment 2. I agree with you. I think we can sometimes take people for granted after being with them for so long because we're thinking we want better in other areas, but it takes a long time to actually find someone who is genuine, good-hearted, and wants the best for you. My God, the amount of challenges you usually have to go through to find a person like that. I'd instead go for an ultimatum, or maybe just have this difficult conversation that I'm thinking of leaving because but I want to give this one last real shot. Now for the update. Two weeks after my last post, I invited my boyfriend to my friend's birthday party. It was at this local brewery, you know, one of those hipster spots with craft beers and all that stuff. The vibe was supposed to be fun and relaxed, but he was just not having it. The dude spent most of the night glued to his phone like it was the most important thing in the world. Like, hello, I'm right here. A mutual friend, Mark, came up to me and asked if everything was okay between us. I just shrugged it off like we were going through a phase. He mentioned seeing my boyfriend hanging out with some old college buddies. 
That kind of made me raise an eyebrow. Like, what's that about? Anyway, as the night went on, my boyfriend reluctantly joined a game of cornhole with some people. He lost over and over, and you could see him getting mad. Afterward, he was all complaining about the game and how tired he was of being bad at everything. I tried to cheer him up and suggested we leave early, grab some food. But on our way out, I overheard him talking to Mark, saying he didn't want to go home yet. I felt so dismissed at that moment, so I just walked ahead to get the car ready. When he finally joined me in the car, he acted all indifferent and started scrolling through social media again. The ride home was just silent. The next day, I was getting ready for a family dinner at my parents' house. I asked my boyfriend to come along, hoping the family setting would lift his spirits. At dinner, my parents asked about our future plans, and there was this awkward silence. He just gave these vague comments about figuring things out. My dad tried to encourage him to look for more opportunities, but you could tell he wasn't really into it. Later, my younger sister showed off her new promotion at work, and he just went quiet, not engaging at all. My mom offered him dessert, trying to include him, but he said he wasn't hungry, which felt so out of character. After dinner, we played a game that required teamwork, and he hesitated to participate, eventually sitting out and scrolling on his phone again. When we got home, I confronted him about his behavior. He dismissed my concerns, saying he was just tired from work. I reminded him that he hasn't been working consistently. Then he snapped back, saying he was doing his best and didn't need me nagging. That escalated into a shouting match, and we were both just so heated. I decided to take a break and went to the gym. While I was there, I saw an old friend from college who mentioned starting a new job. We talked about how fulfilling it felt to be in a positive work environment, and honestly, it made me think. I went home and found my boyfriend asleep on the couch. I took a moment to collect my thoughts before waking him up. I announced my decision to take a break from the relationship for a while. He stirred and asked what I meant, but I told him to think about it. The next day, I packed a bag and went to stay with my sister. She welcomed me and listened attentively as I told her everything that happened. I spent the weekend focusing on myself, enjoying time with her and some friends. After a week, my boyfriend reached out, asking to talk. We met at a coffee shop where he apologized for his behavior and expressed a desire to change. We agreed to give each other space while he finds a job and works on himself. I didn't think it would get to this point, but here we are. I feel like we both needed a reality check, and this might be it. I'm not saying I'm completely done with him or this relationship, but I need to see some real effort on his part before I even think about going back. I just hope he's serious about making these changes. Like I said before, if there's an update, I'll post it to my profile. I think I hit the character limit. Edit, I appreciate the support and suggestions. To clarify, we had been living together, but he moved back to his place. The break is for a month and we're still in touch. He has interviews lined up and I'm hopeful. I know many are concerned, but I needed a clear mind to think. Am I the idiot for confronting my husband about treating his female friend better than me? I do trust my husband to have friends of the opposite gender and I don't have a problem with that. What has become the issue is that his treatment of her really differs from how he treats me. I tried typing out examples, but I just came across as needy, I guess. I'm hitting a rough patch at work. This week, due to my boss not communicating with me, I cleared some things and put them away and I didn't know they were needed for something else. My boss very sarcastically told me, well, thank you for being willing to do work that didn't need to be done and making it harder for us, but thanks anyway. I have already told my boss not to be sarcastic with me because I have a hard time not taking it seriously. My husband told me he knows my boss and he would never do that and that I must have misread his tone. Meanwhile, this woman received some mean comments about her in the group chat they use and my husband filed a complaint on her behalf and is now her representative for the meeting she's having with the bosses about the harassment she's received for dating a coworker. I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like it's a giant slap in the face that he stood up for my boss over me and plays devil's advocate whenever I'm upset with someone. 
but he's willing to go in guns blazing for his friend. I'm proud that he's such a good friend and is willing to stand up against harassment. But at the same time, I don't understand why, when it comes to me, I'm just paranoid and misreading the situation. I understand that my neurodivergence makes it hard for me to read social situations at times, but other people I've talked to told me it was rude. I had to explain to my husband in multiple ways how the tone of voice didn't come across as joking, how my boss has his normal personality, his working personality, and how sometimes he's grumpy and rude, especially with me since I'm the lowest on the seniority list at work. It's honestly hard to feel like such a needy little wuss. I don't know why, but I feel like with her, he's the perfect friend. But with me, he's impatient and constantly questioning the validity of my concerns. I honestly wish he treated me the same way he treats his friend. I don't understand what I've done wrong to make it this way. I want to talk to my husband about this, but I don't want to come across like I'm accusing him of having a crush on her or implying that he's cheating in any sort of way because I know he's not. He's often told me I have nothing to be jealous of with her because she's just a friend and dating someone he respects a lot. I don't know if this is just a problem I need to work on. Maybe I'm just hurt right now because he left me last night to go help them for a long time and told me to stay at home to take care of our child. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one. You're asking how to bring it up with your husband, but you have multiple times and he's dismissed your valid feelings just as many times. You don't need him to fight your battles. All you're asking for is validation. Yeah, it was wrong of your boss to say that. I'm so sorry. That would actually make you feel better, rather than telling you that you misunderstood his tone, which you didn't. He was being rude and a bad manager. Ask him why he feels that his friend's feelings about being treated badly at work are more important than yours. Your husband might know your boss, but he doesn't know him in a professional setting. Some people only show their worst sides to people they consider inferior. You aren't crazy, and you're not making nothing into something. You're just asking for a bit of reassurance and validation, which is the least your husband can do for you if he's so willing to do it for others. You're not the problem, and neither is his coworker. He's the problem. Comment two. We talked about it. I told him I'm proud of the way he stands up for people and is a good friend to others. I told him I didn't feel that he treats me the same way and that he said things that hurt me. He kept interrupting to talk about how badly she had been treated and how it's unfair. He talked about her mental health and well-being. I nearly broke down crying because the other week, while I was having a panic attack, he called me ridiculous and belittled me for freezing up. I told him plainly that he keeps hurting me in ways that are getting harder and harder to just forgive and forget. Maybe it's just my anxiety and paranoia talking again. Now, for the update. I'm sure a lot of you thought that I would be coming back with a divorce update. And it might be a bit shocking, but that's not what I'm here for today. I wish I could say things got better, but really, nothing has changed. I just don't know what to do. It's been just over two days since the other events happened and I decided to confront my husband about the way he treats me versus how he treats this female friend of his. I waited until after dinner when our child was asleep and it was just the two of us. I started the conversation light, asking about his day and how his friend was doing since he had been supporting her. He initially responded casually but quickly got defensive. He acted like I was the crazy one he mentioned that I was overreacting and that he was just being supportive. He had the nerve to say that he didn't understand what the big deal was. I tried to stay calm and brought up the comments from my boss to illustrate the point. But of course, he interrupted me, saying that I was too sensitive and needed to toughen up. That really made me mad. I told him that he filed a complaint for his friend when she was bullied in a group chat, but he hasn't done anything like that for me. He had the audacity to say that the situations were different. This was when our regular back and forth turned into a full-on argument. I took a walk around the block to cool off. While walking, I saw a couple arguing loudly outside their house, and it wasn't really helping my mood, but it was kind of a distraction. 
When I got home, I found my husband on the couch, scrolling through his phone. He didn't even acknowledge me when I walked in. The silence between us was intense. The next day, I overheard him on the phone with his friend, laughing about some recent trip they took. Later that week, our family went to a birthday party for a mutual friend. At the party, he seemed overly friendly with his female friend, like all over her. During a quieter moment, I tried to approach him to express my feelings. He brushed me off, saying that I was being paranoid and that I should lighten up. I spent the rest of the party mingling alone while feeling increasingly resentful. After the party, I just couldn't handle it anymore. I found myself retreating to our bedroom and leaving him in the living room. Later that night, he came in, asking if I was mad at him. He suggested that we take a weekend trip to clear our heads, which I hesitated to accept. I mean, I wasn't mad at him, I was frustrated and hurt, but I needed some space from him. That weekend, we went to a cabin in the woods to reconnect. Things seemed to improve as we shared some light moments around the fire. However, the mood changed when he got a call from his friend. He stepped outside to take the call, leaving me alone in the cabin. The next day, I found a text on his phone from his friend, hinting at something more. I confronted him again, and he insisted it was nothing. This trip ended without a clear resolution. We returned home in silence. Edit. After the events of the update, I took some time to think. I realized that I felt alone in our marriage. I had been trying to communicate my feelings, but it seemed like my husband wasn't willing to listen. I decided to talk to a friend about everything. She suggested couples therapy, but I wasn't sure my husband would agree to that. I also thought about the text I found from his friend. It made me question his loyalty. I decided to set clear boundaries about our relationship. If he wasn't willing to meet me halfway, then we had a bigger problem. I hope to have a productive conversation soon. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.